not going. Honey, you're gonna have all these fans lining up to meet you. I know. You're gonna sign a few DVDs and then come back to me. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pete O'Shea Show. I'm excited right now because Jonathan's gonna be signing Chain Face Clown, the Blu-ray re-release. Go see him today. Fans come to the show to sleep with their favorite horror star, which is you. Hey, I'm Jonathan Blakely. My name's Emily. Do you wanna hang out later? There's a tattoo of my face on your leg. Are you freaked out? I really have to get going. You and I were just so good together. It was like I finally met my soulmate. And we should just keep in touch online. You're staying right oh. here. This is your new home. I'm Chain hey, Face's yeah. biggest fan. <laughs> Chain. Hey, kid. <laughs> Are you awake? Where am I right now? I'm like, what's going on? You and I could write a prequel to show how that killer came to life. Oh, get out of here now! You love having your fans fawn over you. Can I confess something to you? I just want to go home. I won't let you! Ah! I now have a part of you with me, always. Scream! Ah! <laughs> he told me about you. A maniac like you doesn't even know what love is! Goodbye, Jonathan. <laughs> let us go, please. Ah! Lights out! Who's this? Oliver Robbins. How are you? <laughs> it's Jeff in Vegas. How are you doing, Oliver? <laughs> yeah, good. I'm doing great. I'm just getting used to all the Zoom stuff. This is so interesting. Oh, tell me about it. I didn't know about Zoom until like a couple months ago, and now I'm getting so used to it. It's just like, uh, it's crazy. But yeah, it works out really well. So thanks for having me today, too. This is awesome. Are you kidding? You're an icon, you know? I'm oh. a Generation X, and I am so thrilled to talk to you today. And we'll do the Poltergeist stuff at the end. But I want to talk to you about Celebrity Crush. Well, let's talk about it. Well, uh, Chain Face Clown, tell me about uh, the origin. How you came up with this idea? And, you know, being a child star, I would think there's got to be some sort of fan encounter or just some incident that said, you know what, I'm going to do something uh, exaggerated of what a child star and fans when they finally cross that line. Well, I was at this horror convention and I met a couple, you know, little off kilter people. And then I was thinking to myself, what if we did a movie about some crazy sociopathic fan? And, but then we play with all the tropes of it. Let's fix horror, fix a little comedy. And I wanted to play with the audience in such a way where you didn't know if you're supposed to laugh or you're supposed to be hor totally horrified or maybe both at the same time. So then I came up with this idea of Celebrity Crush, and I said, what if the character was in this movie called Chain Face Clown? You know, and I love 80s movies, but let's not make it a movie like Poltergeist. Let's make it, you know, kind of a B-ish movie of the day. But in 30 years later, it became a cult classic. And that's what we kind of modeled Ch uh, Chain Face Clown on, too. And then there's a resurgence of fans for Chain Face Clown. And, you know, one of those fans is just completely in love with my character, Jonathan Blakely, and uh, wants to basically, wants me to be part of her life forever. And the movie kicks off at a comic book store signing uh, with all the cast members. I've been to so many comic cons. I have been to a lot of autograph shows. I'm sure you've had your share over the years too. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I love going to the shows and meeting the fans. And what I love about it is they tell me stories about when they saw Poltergeist. And I never got this opportunity as a kid to know what they, they said. Well, I was on a first date and I'm, and now I'm watching with my kids and it's so great to see how this film impacted their lives. And I always thought about that growing up. I mean, how did this film impact people and how they felt about it? But I got that opportunity. So for the most part, going to the conventions has been a blast. But, you know, sometimes you have your crazy, like at any, any place in life. And I want to kind of bring that into play in Celebrity Crush. And the poster for Chain Face Clown, you've got your classic scream face. That is you on the poster, isn't it? That, no, no, that is actually Eddie, Eddie Craig, who's one of the actors in the movie. So no, no, he I, is. Like the child's face. That's not Oh, the child face. Yes, that's me. So we modeled it. And there's a great actor we found named Jake Getman, who played me, played little Jonathan Blakely in the movie. And he looked exactly like me. We saw him. We saw his performance. So like, Jake is just perfect to play you as a kid, Oliver. And uh, writing and directing this film, tell me about your shooting schedule, because uh, this is low budget and horror film. Tell me about examples of thinking fast and on your feet when, it, when that occasion arised. Well, you know, um, I, I told my friend Michael Baumgart, I wrote the script and I said, hey, let's make this movie. And he says, Oliver, I have it taken care of. We're going to go to Florida in the height of the summer and shoot this film in 10 days. 
So we went down there and we had to move fast and furiously over 10 days and all the sweat and all the, you know, the heat and humidity just played perfectly for the movie. So yeah, we just had to basically think on our feet, figure exactly how are we going to shoot these scenes? We have squibs and all this blood and we got to do it quickly. So every day was like a new challenge of how we're going to tell the story. And I was acting it too. So there really was really little time to think other than our shot list. I just went through my shot list and I had the plan. And we try to execute it the best job we possibly can. And we had a fantastic little crew that just was so gung-ho. Um, and they were willing to just put their best foot forward and say, this is the movie. We're going to make this. And we're going to make it the best film it could possibly be. And finding your Emily, because she carries the movie. That's a big part. So tell me about finding her in, in the casting process for finding her. I, that was my major concern. And I said, if we can't find a good Emily, we're not going to make this movie. Because that is the engine of the film. So my friend Michael Baumgartner, who produced it with me, said, I have the perfect actress for you. She was in one of my other movies. And I said, really? And she says, yes. So we had her audition, one of the crazier scenes from the film. And she, Alicia Schneider, had the perfect balance of insanity and humor. And also the fact is one of the key elements of the role is that you really had to believe that I would be seduced by her, that she wasn't so crazy that I'd be hands off from the very beginning, literally and figuratively. And so she kind of seduces me and you have to believe that. And then we slowly have to make that transition to see how much, how crazy she really is. And then I'm in so deep and I, I can't escape. And you have to also believe that how crazy she is, but she also had to do it in a really fun way, a kooky way. And she had all those amazing elements. And of course that cool chain face tattoo on her leg. That was awesome. Was that permanent? <laughs> no, no, that believe it or not, that was digitally drawn on too. We had a no temporary way, one really? on there. And that was so much. And we had such a, a talented special effects guy. He did so many of our effects in the movie. You watch it and you go, oh my God, was that an effect? And yes, that was an effect. You know? So you can do so much with technology there with movie making, even on a, on a limited budget. And how much cake did Eddie Craig have to eat in that scene? Well, we only had two cakes. So we had to get that in two takes. I said, and I never wanted to pressure him. And I'm like, thinking, if we don't get this in two takes, well, that's, that's it. We have no, we can't shoot it again. So he did it on the second take and Eddie was just fantastic. And he just, I said, just have fun with it and eat your cake. And you're, you know, this, you don't even use a fork or knife. You're just going to grab it and eat it. And he did. You know, you have no taboos in this movie. I mean, cannibalism, that was really disgusting. Yeah. We, you know, you got to have everything in there, you know. I want to please my audience and you know, and it kind of fits for the whole tone of the piece too. Like you don't know if you're supposed to be laughing or screaming or maybe both too. I was sick to my stomach actually. <laughs> uh, we, we did our part. And the, wheel, <laughs> and the wheelchair bloodbath. I mean, that was really gross. I mean, you really exaggerated it, but it was just like, ew. That was amazing. And we, that was actually, believe it or not, a difficult scene to assemble too. And I worked on it with my editor um, many, we did many different cuts of it and just try to get the pacing of it and get the, you know, the hills and valleys of that sequence too. Um, mm -hmm. and I think people really will, will love it when they see it. And you use quick cuts and edits, very psycho shower scene, very, you used really just glimpses, which I really thought was really more effective than you showing people getting butchered like in real time. Well, you know, I was talking to my editor about it. And the fact is, you know, what you don't see is so much more powerful many times than you do see. I think a lot of films use a lot of CG and that's fantastic for the right purpose. But, you know, we pull back and if you don't have the ability to do a million CG shots, you have something you actually can show less and that's actually much more powerful. And the editor and I worked on that together to create those moments and just giving you just enough that your imagination takes over. And can, that's far more scary than anything that we could have put on screen. And I love how you got the cast together to consider a sequel for your movie using texting. I just love the bubbles that would come up. That was really effective. You know, and we wanted to really use all our modern day things that are going on in our lives. So the texting is part of what we do. And especially, the, you know, the, the she's in her late 20s. That's exactly the, what she'd be apt to be able to do that and be able to text and manipulate my world. Because if, if someone gets your phone, they basically can, and they basically can control your entire life. <laughs> And you had that radio show host at the beginning of the film. He looked just like John Favreau. I thought it was him at first. He was fantastic, too. We loved working with him. He was actually, and you're going to forgive me. I forgot his name. Oh my God. But he's <laughs> out there. He's like, how should you forget my name, Oliver? But he was fantastic. You'll have to check IMDb. Um, <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, he was great. And we, we did it in like one or two takes. Uh, we just said, okay, we're going to pretend like we're actually shooting a radio show. And that was assembled from that footage. Was that a comic book store in LA or was that in Florida? 
that was in Florida. And Florida was so great to us. You know, many locations we probably couldn't have got really gotten in California. Um, the way we were doing the movie. So we were able to just go ahead and we put a, a call out for people who wanted to be extras in the comic book scene. And we had like a hundred people show up so we could shoot it. And you know, Quentin Tarantino, when he made Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he shot three or four complete episodes of Bounty Law. I mean, just that's how crazy he wrote these episodes out. So I'm thinking throughout this film, I want to see Chain Face Clown. Have you considered making that actual film? <laughs> We have, and we've gotten a lot of people to talk to us about it. And we think if we make that film, it's not going to be a film inspired by the 80s. It's going to be a film from the 80s. So our feeling, our pitch would be that this is a film that just took a time warp in the 2020. And this film is actually of Chain Based Clown. And you just didn't hear about it, but it did actually come out in 1985. All right, time to talk about Poltergeist. And <laughs> you know, that film was, you know, I'm Generation X. I was about 16 when I saw it. And I was one of those kids. I so identified with you because I was a kid who had the nightlight. There was something underneath my bed screaming for my mom. And I think this, I don't know if this is bizarre or not, but my favorite part of the film with you is when you try to cover up the clown and you miss it and you stare for a little bit and then you just kind of like, okay, you know, you just make that, that look. You know, I just love that scene. I have to really credit that to Toby Hooper too. Toby was like, okay, I want you to, he was so great at directing children and he made me feel so comfortable. And that was all of his guidance. He said, you know, come up to the, I remember he said, come up to the, like the clown and just, you know, try to throw something over it. And then you make a decision that yeah, it's okay. I'll go to sleep. I'm thinking, I'm thinking too much about it. And that was kind of Toby's direction in that. And here's the, the real creepy part for the last 25 years. It's not there anymore, but our planet Hollywood here at the forum shops at Caesars palace had the clown front and center in the center of it. And we would always try to get a table by the poltergeist clown. <laughs> I heard that too. I had never been, I've been to Vegas many times, but I never saw the clowns all there. Well, I they moved, love to have seen that. Well, they moved it now. So across the way, you know, I don't know if it's still in there. I, they took a lot of that merchandise out when they uh, opened up the hotel. So I don't know what happened to it all, but that clown was always yeah. there and people are always fighting to sit next to it. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, I don't, it's, it was scary. I mean, I was, I was a scary clown. I think they may actually need three of them on the set. Well, you know, you just talked to my buddy, Tony Toscano in Salt Lake. He's my, my best friend for 20 years. And we do Halloween Horror Nights every year. And I saw, I was cruising the net. You were there in 2018 walking the red carpet. How did we miss you? I don't know. You, I should have been interviewed. I, there were so many people to talk to next time. For the next time I do it, I'll talk to you guys. Absolutely. You know, Oliver, this has been such a thrill. Uh, congratulations on the, on the film. It's disgusting. And I can see the real thing. You know what I mean? So uh, come visit us in Las Vegas. And uh, we'd love to have you. I definitely will, too. Thanks for having me, too.